Okay, so now we're going to dig into the mechanics of Copilot for Microsoft 365. And to do that, I'm joined by Mary David Pash, who's on the team building out this technology. So why don't we start with some basics in terms of things like what's in the LLM versus what retrieval does. So why don't we start with the LLM? Like, what's part of that training set? How does that all work? Yeah, it's a great question. So on a fundamental level, the large language model is trained on massive amounts of data. And this is public data from the web, articles, books. And it uses all of that data um, to uh, create a knowledge base that you can then interact with using a prompt. And a prompt mm -hmm. is simply a question or a statement that you send to the large language model. And then it generates a response uh, based on your question or statement using all of that knowledge that it's gained. And what I love about it is you can also give it additional context. For example, tell me in one short sentence or give me bullet points. Those things are part of basically the language expertise that it has to generate the language. Now, where would I see maybe where the LLM doesn't have all the information? Right, so one of the challenges with a large language model is that it is trained in a point in time. And so um, when you ask it a question, let's say if you, know, if you ask a question something that happened uh, today, um, it wouldn't know that. And so you can actually see this in Copilot. We actually augment um, what the LLM is capable with a sophisticated orchestration engine that can augment with web data, with organizational data. Right. But if you go ahead and turn all of those off and you can do this with plugins which allow you to toggle on different capabilities, um, you can interact with essentially just the large language model's knowledge. And so here I'll ask a question, um, you know, what, who won the Eurovision Song Contest that just happened just over a week Very ago. Very recent event, yeah. Yes, and this is after the point at which the large language model was trained. And so the large language model is not able to answer this question. Um, and because here I've turned off that capability to augment with real-time web data, it will just respond and let me know that it doesn't know how to respond, that it doesn't know the answer to this question. Right, and there's no hallucination or anything here. It's just basically saying, I don't know the, the answer to this. So it gives us that response back. Now, what about um, you know things that it can't know? You, you talked about how it could maybe use search to find information, but what if even search couldn't find that information? And you ask it something that might be internal knowledge or something that only you know, how would that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you know, if you ask a question like here, um, I will have search turned on, but I'll ask a question um, like, you know, what did uh, what did I have for breakfast this morning? And this is something that's not available on the web. It's not part of my organizational knowledge. Right. Um, it's not the training uh, data set. And so when I ask this question to co-pilot, um, it doesn't have the ability to answer this question, and so it will respond, letting me know that um, it doesn't have uh, access to that kind of personal I can tell it was thinking about it for a while. Now, what, how would you correct this? Now, what's, what's the secret to making this better? Right, so uh, one of the things that you can do is add information in the prompt itself. So mm -hmm. if I ask, you know, what did I have for breakfast? I can give it a little hint and say, um, I had oatmeal for breakfast. And now I've actually given it more information that it can use to actually create its response. Um, and this example is a little bit silly because I'm asking a question and giving the answer. But you could imagine if I, you know, asked a question like summarize, uh, you know, what our key risks and opportunities are for next quarter. And then I gave it information coming from email and from documents, then it could generate a really sophisticated response. But this is really the key here because basically you're adding a prompt and in the background, instead of you manually typing that you had oatmeal and coffee for breakfast, it's finding that information either on the web or it's looking inside of SharePoint or OneDrive or another data source. So this is really the key to how the retrieval or retrieval augmented generation or grounding these types of things work. These are new, new terms to you. These are the kind of things that it's doing in the background to augment your prompt. So what's really kind of going on behind the scenes? Yeah, this is a really key concept, I think, for uh, developers here to really take away is that, you know, the user asks a question, but what we actually send to the large language model is much more than that. So we've got this larger modified prompt that has the user question. It has additional information that it might have found from the web or other grounding sources. Um, and it can also have some other things, too, to help it create a better response. So for, you know, as an example, you know, we say that the large language model doesn't, uh, doesn't learn, it doesn't retain information. So if you want to have a conversational experience where it's remembering what we're talking about, we actually send that conversation history in every prompt that we send. So it right. feels like you're asking questions and you can ask follow-up questions about what you just talked about. Um, and because it has that in the prompt, it can use that as context to answer the question. Yeah, because it saw your previous questions, it saw the previous answers, and basically in that one session, and this is the important bit, the session is retained kind of to the side of the LLM, but it's never brought into the LLM itself as part of its training. That's right, yeah. And so you can even see that, you know, if you if you take a look at some of the prompts, you can actually see some of that, you know, session history that gets sent. So if I'm talking about Microsoft 365, it remembers that. 
But if I start a new session history, then it doesn't have um, any of that history. It can't use that, and so it's starting from scratch. And you can actually see this today if you if you use Copilot. You know, I'll go back to this conversation I had where I let it know what I had for breakfast. Um, but now, if I choose to create a new topic um, mm -hmm. and start over, it doesn't have that information that I just told it. Um, and so it will, uh, when I ask the question again, it won't know the answer. Right. And that's where it's quite a bit different in terms of like maybe a human that might be uh, asking that question or answering that question in that it, it doesn't know. Once you go to a new topic, the session history is gone. That stuff to the side of the LLM is no longer there. So it can't answer the question, even though you're in the same tab in the same kind of browser, everything, exactly. but you wipe that session history and therefore it doesn't know. But Importantly, you can save the session history off to the side of the LLM, like we see here on the right with all the recents. And the other thing that's pretty cool with that is if you're using Copilot for Microsoft 365, you can use this as part of your audit and compliance controls, for example, with that. Okay, so now we've kind of seen the basics here. Why don't we go into you know, what happens when you, know, when, when you add Microsoft 365 effectively to the mix and you add things like SharePoint and OneDrive to that? Yeah, Copilot becomes even more powerful when you start to integrate it in your different apps. And, um, you know, really, Copilot for Microsoft 365 is taking all of that knowledge from the large language model, but it's pairing it with all of your graph uh, knowledge. It's pairing it with knowledge from, from the internet, and then it's surfacing those experiences across all the apps that, uh, that people use today. And graph is probably the big key uh, piece mm -hmm. here. Uh, Microsoft Graph is something that we've had for over a decade. It's all of your information. Um, um, and you can search for across that information, files, emails, people you work with in all your apps. So we augment our prompts with that information. And that's how Copilot for Microsoft 365 can answer questions based on the information that you have access to, um, to give really these magical uh, experiences that help you be really productive because they know right. your content. And this is key here because basically it's not just a text generation window or side pane in the like Word or Excel or PowerPoint. It actually has this context to be able to reference a file or go to different information to where you can get that as part of the Copilot experience. It's more than just text generation in the apps. It's got the context of the different things that you have access to, kind of like it says here on the screen. Now, um, something else to talk about is basically how Copilot for Microsoft 365 can also view, say, information that's in the graph, like a meeting recap, for example. So here we've got, you know, we say we had a meeting with Adele Vance, we wanna to go to Teams. And one of the things that I use every day is being able to catch up on different meetings that I've been in to be able to get that information, get a recap for the meeting, any action items that I have, and actually use that to get all of that context and all that information. Now, one of my favorite things to do, by the way, as I, as I build out things like technical content or mechanics, is using a couple of files and referencing those as part of, say, Word in uh, Copilot. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see we've got a KB article, which I love writing these things. And I've got some notes on the right-hand side of the screen. So if I look at my KB article, it has you know, all the telltale signs of a KB article. It's got all of the kind of what's supported, what works, you know, system requirements, those types of things as you'd expect from a KB. On the right-hand side, though, this is what I want to write. I want to write a new KB article to launch remote help and how that works. So I've got two different files, KB818 on the, on the left, and I've got my notes on the right. And the cool thing is, is in Word, I can actually go in and I can add references to both of those documents so that it can both look at what I want it to write in terms of the voice and the kind of the formatting, the um, notes that I had on the right-hand side of the screen, and then also look at Microsoft.com through the internet, then generate that whole KB article for me and it's not going to get it to 100% completion exactly where I want it, but it's going to give you a great start in terms of being able to add maybe uh, pictures to it, screenshots, additional information. And I've got a very, very solid start in terms of how I would, I would write that KB article. And it all just takes a few seconds with a fairly descriptive prompt, but pretty easy that pretty much anyone could do. Yeah, and this is some, you know, this scenario actually is one that I love because it really takes it from just chatting with your organizational data to doing really sophisticated, uh, sophisticated tasks where you're actually creating documents, it's multi-step, it's organizing um, a pretty complex execution plan that would have taken you many steps to actually research mm -hmm. the information and write the document and pull it all together. And I think that is where Copilot really shines, is pulling your information in your apps and then being able to orchestrate across um, a number of different capabilities. And I think probably for a lot of developers here, they're wondering like, well, how do I actually, uh, you know, I might have data that, yep. that I want to bring to Copilot or I 
have new capabilities or I want to build my own uh, co-pilot experience. So how, how can I uh, plug into that? And that's really the big news this week is the ability to build your own co-pilot. So we're saving kind of, I think, the best and the most newsiest thing for last. Why don't you talk through like what building your own co-pilot would mean? Yeah, so, you know, Today, you've seen, you know, we just showed you how you can use uh, Copilot as a standalone a chat experience. We've shown it in uh, the different uh, apps. And now you can actually build your own Copilot uh, experience with uh, Copilot extensions. And this pairs your ability to uh, connect with your external data with also plugins. Um, plugins are a great way to actually add capabilities to Copilot, not just data that might live externally, mm -hmm. but actually being able to complete tasks, to take actions um, in, you know, the services that you have. Have. And connectors um, really build on the story that we've had for a long time in Microsoft Graph, which is our story for how you can bring your content that might be external into the graph. Copilot extensions then pulls that all together. You can actually create your own Copilot. It can have its own uh, in even instructions that you give it. So we were talking about that modified prompt. You can actually provide additional uh, instructions in that prompt. And then you have this Copilot experience that's really tailored for your users and your use cases. So what does this look like running then? What would a finished Copilot, full page Copilot look like? Yeah, absolutely. So here we are, um, and this is a, just a look at that uh, standalone Copilot uh, experience. I'm I've actually tailored my own co-pilot here. You can see that even the prompts uh, that are suggested right from the top are tailored for my particular scenario. Um, and then I can ask a question. So uh, maybe I'll ask to update a wiki article about remote uh, help um, to make sure that the user logs in and does the right appropriate steps. And what this is doing is it's actually connecting to the external uh, data and then being able to actually take actions um, by closing, you know, whether it's closing the ticket or updating the actual article. And that's um, how you can build your own Copilot extension. Right, and that's one of the biggest announcements of the week. So I'd encourage everyone, by the way, to look at aka.ms slash copilot m365 docs. There you can find information about this and all of the inner workings of Microsoft 365 and Copilot for Microsoft 365. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.